In this video, I'm going to show you how I place a long span resin bonded bridge, replacing the lower incisors using the lower canines as abutments. And the main takeaway from this lecture is how to manage the soft tissue. Because once the bridge came back, actually placing on, I felt some resistance, i.e. the soft tissue was in the way. But by managing it the way I did, and I'll share how I did that, the end result of having these ovate pontics as part of these resin bond bridges is this, you get these beautiful soft tissues and that looks like the tooth is emerging from the gum. Uh, there is a very limited amount of black triangles, yet we still get a cleansable space. So there's a lot of benefits here from having ovate pontics. So I'm gonna share with you how to manage that. My name is Jazz Galanti. I'm a general dentist in the UK uh, and the proud host of Protrusive Dental Podcast. Let's get to the video. So here I am checking the actual bridge itself in the mouth. I'm just getting like a, a rehearsal. I'm always checking about how I'm going to place it on. I'm checking about the quality of the fit. I then place an obturgate for situations like this. I don't tend to use a rubber dam. I'm getting my area super clean. You can't bond to stain. So any stains I'm getting rid of, I'm using my ultrasonic scaler, my Cavitron, and then later on, you'll see me using the air abrasion unit. But I'm very, very meticulous here in getting rid of any staining because you just cannot bond to stain. I'm then gonna be trying on the resin bridge, and you'll notice that actually there's a gap, and I'll show you in a moment. The gap exists because we're not able to seat the bridge all the way because the soft tissues are in the way. Focus on just this area here, because that's where you see the blanching of the gum, basically. So just focus here the whole time as I show you, because the gum starts to go white. It starts to blanch, because that's where too much pressure from the pontic is going. There's a couple of different ways to manage this scenario when you're placing a resin bridge and the soft tissue is in the way of the pontic. And because in the way of the pontic, you don't get a reliable seat. It's not actually seating how nicely it is in the model. So one way you can manage it is you get the patient to bite on some cotton rolls and you wait around about 10 minutes. And what that does is that the pontics will then sink into the tissues. And you can see that lovely blanching right there because then it's gonna recreate what we have on the model. So that model shows the amount of soft tissue depression we need from our pontics. I don't have the patience for that, so I'm gonna do it this way. Plus with the cotton wool way, Will you ever know that if you've got a passivity or not? That's a concern I have. And the other concern I have is once you've cemented it in place, the tissues rebound. So in that critical first 24 hours where the bond is so important, I don't want any pressure continuously coming from the, the pontics. Therefore, uh, I opted to do some adjustment of the soft tissues using my favorite birth soft tissue adjustment, the Thermocup Burr. And if you're in the market for these, uh, I'd get the assorted pack. You get like a size of like uh, four or five different sizes. Instead of just getting the one size, you get like small ones and a medium one and a big one. So different papillas, different areas of soft tissues, you can use the correct size Thermocup Burr. They last forever because it's got no diamonds on it and they're dirt cheap. So I would just invest in a set of Thermocup Burrs that help you in this kind of scenario. So because I don't want the soft tissues to rebound and put my cement my resin cement under some stress, even though it's a small amount of stress really, but I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is that I've anesthetized the patient and I've identified the areas where the pontic is sitting. Now, if you're not sure, the first time you're doing this, just try the bridging again, press, 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 as I'm just doing here and see exactly where you need to adjust. And then once you've pressed it on, you'll notice the, the blanching of the tissue. Now, logic would make you think that it's where it's blanched is where you need to adjust, but actually that's not the case. You actually need to adjust uh, over here in this region where it's not so blanched. And you see that nice little imprint of the pontic there. So uh, in the earlier days, I might have got my thermocut burr and started adjusting the blanch areas, but no, it's actually next to the blanch areas usually. But if ever in doubt, just actually place the bridge like I did and identify for yourself exactly where you need to adjust. So now you know where to adjust, the patient's nice and numb, and you can now go ahead uh, and use your thermocut burr. So here I am, full speed, no water. I make a joke to my patient, I say, it's gonna smell like a barbecue, that's what I say basically. It doesn't, not so bad actually, uh, and the patient doesn't feel anything, and you'll see for yourself, you don't get much bleeding because it kind of burns the tissue in, in a way. So this is a great way to manage soft tissues. The other option I had, like if I didn't remove the soft tissue, how else could you get the bridge to fit? Well, you would have to adjust the pontic, i.e. you have to drill some ceramics. So why do I want to do that? The whole point of going for these ovate pontics was for aesthetics and uh, minimizing these black triangles uh, and getting a nice emergence profile. Therefore, it would defeat the purpose of doing it. But if ever you had this scenario where you're not sure what to do and an option is to adjust the ceramic, you could, that is another way to do it. So instead I adjusted the soft tissues and now I'm trying in and I'm seeing that, okay, it's feeling a little bit more passive now. 
uh, and therefore I know that I'm able to fully seat my bridge. You can see exactly where we need to uh, get more adjustment done, so it's not fully seated. So I'm going to go back, uh, I still felt a bit of resistance on my hand, so I'm going to go back and just make that a little bit wider to make sure that the pontics are sitting very nicely against soft tissue and I'm hoping for passivity. And now I'm checking how it fits and it fits like it was on the model basically. So now I'm happy that I can continue to my bonding process. I'm checking here as well to get rid of any doubt. You're also rehearsing. I'm rehearsing on the model, I'm rehearsing on the mouth, so that when I come to that critical stage of bonding, it's gonna be familiar. It's not gonna be like me learning how it sits together. You know, I, I rehearse and I rehearse and I rehearse, and so I can make sure that I can get to the same place and get that feel, get the feel of the bridge. How is it gonna feel against my finger and thumb when I'm seating it so I know if I've misseated it, if you like. So there we are, I'm checking again. I'm checking the occlusion lightly. We'll talk about that another time as well. Now, just to point out, there was actually some miscommunication here. So when I'm gonna highlight here, you see how there's a seating lug. I actually didn't want that. I actually wanted more than that. I actually wanted for the bridge to continue all the way along half the surface of this canine, basically, i.e. half on the occlusal table of that canine or the incisal table of that canine. I think that this is a really good feature to have when doing reservoir and bridges and your patients will allow you to do this aesthetically because when you're loading the pontic, instead of the forces on the pontic causing slippage of that retainer, now the retainer has something to grip onto and that actually pre prevents your resin lute from experiencing shear stresses, basically. So it's a good thing to have for the retainer or the abutment of your resin bridge to seat over and cover over the abutment tooth. But my technician wasn't able to do it this time because of some lack of miscommunication. But the, the way I communicated this was pretty crystal clear on my side. So let me show you what I use. I use these loom videos. And these loom videos are, are ways that I tend to communicate these cases to, uh, because A, I don't like uh, writing and uh, typing so much. B, I'm like a voice message kind of guy and a video kind of guy. So uh, communicating with my technician over the last year using loom has been brilliant. So let me show you uh, an example of this exact case, the loom prescription I did, uh, and what I wanted from the lab. Uh, but also it just shows you, what you what's possible through lab communication. You can also use it if you're a practice owner and you want to create training training manuals for your nurses or admin team, you can make a video once and then you make like a, a training portfolio for, for, your, for your team. So the website for that is loom.dental. That's loom.dental. If you want to check out the power of loom, let me just show you a little example clip. And so actually bring it over and, and cover half to three quarters of the um, uh, canine. Now don't worry about the occlusion, he's gotten up a complete denture. I will adjust, I think it's the left side which is touching a bit, I will adjust it, don't worry. I need you to, I need you to cover over um, the canine with the metal, so it's going to start lingually, go all the way around, wrap over onto the uh, canine. This will protect the Resbarn Bridge um, cement loot against shear forces. Uh, I do believe it's um, attributed this to my success. So yeah, like here, you're going to wrap over. So for you, obviously, we're wrapping over to the canines, basically. So now we have the bridge uh, seated passively. I'm ready to cement it. I'm going to go through my bonding protocol that involves getting the abutment retainer super clean. I'm going to air abrade the tooth itself to get rid of any biofilm and staining to optimize the surface for bonding. Uh, this is a kind of like a lesson on the soft tissue management. If you'd like to see the full video in terms of uh, pre-op, mid-op, even how to remove the old resin burn bridge and how we did that and, and tips and advice about removing old bridge work. Uh, I've got two ways that you can access that. One is if you're a member of my Resin Bonded Bridges Masterclass. This is my mini online course on resin bond bridges, just over three hours with some bonus content that I'm adding as it goes along. So even those who, who purchased this two years ago, you get new up-to-date content. So if you're already a member, just sign in. You'll see the full video uh, of this case, including a bonding protocol and also a little bit of discussion on when it's appropriate to use this soft tissue technique and when you shouldn't use this soft tissue technique. So you can check out Resin Bond Bridges Masterclass. So I'll bbmasterclass.com and the second and exciting way that you can access the full video is exclusive content as a Protrusive Premium member. If you download the Protrusive app on the App Store or on the Google Play Store, you can actually download the app and join my membership. By joining the membership, you get a whole load of benefits including getting CPD certificates for the episodes, but you get exclusive content that no one else gets uh, and as part of that, uploading really useful 
clinical videos with this kind of walkthrough and, and commentary, which people told me is very helpful. So I've got lots more planned for you guys. So if you want to support what I'm doing, you check out Protrusive Education, the app, and therefore you get access to exclusive content just like this, really going into full depth and detail. So either join RBB Masterclass, see the full video, or download the Protrusive Premium app and join as a member. It's about 12 pounds or just above that for USD per month. And what I hope to achieve with that is to give you 120 pounds or over 120 dollars worth of value per month. It's really my drive to make it the best bargain and dentistry you can find in terms of clinical education and also giving you educational value. So I hope you enjoyed this little tip on using the Thermocut for soft tissue removal. Please do hit that subscribe button for more. Hopefully I'll catch you on Protrusive Premium. Thank you.